ओके जी नमस्ते थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग वेलकम टू अनदर संडे मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू द योर डे योर सेशन योर योगा सेशन योर टाइम फॉर योर सेल्फ ओके दिस इज द टाइम probably in the whole week you can do something for yourself the more you do for yourself the better you can do for others all right so first to make a change you have to become the change right today's father's day so all the best for every father पितृदेवी भव मातृदेवी भव गुरुदेव भव दैट्स आवर टीचिंग मदर इज द फर्स्ट टीचर फादर इज द सेकंड टीचर एंड गुरु मीनिंग योर गाइडेंस इन लाइफ टीचर्स आर द थर्ड टीचर्स ऑफ योर लाइफ एज ह्यूमन बीइंग्स वी आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन बीइंग टॉट ओनली स्पीसीज which requires education otherwise they don't grow and that's human being all other species they have innate knowledge of whatever they need to do and they are limited in their capability of creativity because of that but human beings have unlimited creativity freedom to the point even the creator god even doesn't restrict them what to do so it can be either good or bad whatever is is your choice so that's why education teachers in life for a human being is essentially important yeah. so yeah every father does that every mother does that is the same mother is a bigger teacher than a father okay all right so sit straight get the universal sound the shaman resonance if you align yourself and speech is the power so creation is nothingness or wholeness from which arises what's called awareness from awareness you get consciousness and from consciousness you get mind from your from mind you get physical attributes of what we become and the physical attribute in that is speech which is the means of communication so if you link all the way right to the source your speech is very powerful so that's why we bring in alignment if you get a speech alignment with the source and it obviously takes a lot of time from your speech to mind mind to consciousness consciousness to awareness and awareness into uh, in the nothingness or the source or the wholeness so if the more you align the better you are able to tap into that source and the source is in you which is reflected through your spirit or your soul it's called atma which is a component but in a limited form of the infinite consciousness of the creator so that's why you dig and go deep inside you because if you reach the internal aspect of you then you link with the the source All right so shaman resonance is this wavelength of sound the more you practice on it the more you will align with your source breathe in deeply wow
शांति ही शांति ही शांति पुनः आप सभी को धन्यवाद थैंक यू अगेन और स्टार्ट द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज आसन और फिजिकल एक्सरसाइज इफ एंड हाउ आई से of the different components of what makes who we are the body being the vehicle or the the driver sitting within if the car is not serviced well the car is not driving well how can it's no you know the driver sits in there at a very high risk this body needs to be looked after that's the paramount part of it then your mind if you don't look after these two components it's very hard to connect to your source so that's why we do these things the exercise okay so you have to move your spine spine is the channel within you to reach the source okay so these exercises are rhythmic they're symmetrical they utilize your body weight it's within the environment which is safe enough even you can do in your house like what we are doing okay so pachin uttan asans lift your hand touch your toes three times is minimum and you can do as many as times whatever time permits you in your own time i my role is to share a little bit of knowledge that i have because if, as i say knowledge is the only way for human development we don't really progress without any kind of education as i said in the beginning it's a limitation of being a human okay so now move your ankles clockwise three times anti clockwise three times separate your legs push your toes inside in 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 and then out okay so so you don't get all this kind of pain in your ankle such a huge problem for people yeah chakki asan hold your fists together hands together rotate your body hold of your body go clockwise three times again and then three times and you clockwise now move your legs open them on the right side then on the left side pull your legs in thigh muscles these are big big muscles yeah the more you must utilize them the better the metabolism is the more you are likely to lose weight right now specific asanas for your energy system so like the earth this seven planes different physical attributes to earth there is seven within us this energy centers from muladhara root chakra right to the top of your head and there are seven levels of descriptions of how the atmosphere is outside so again it's all about alignment right so earth it's uh, the grounding part of it how you align with earth through these energy centers and these energy centers become the medium to align yourself with the universe the greater energy source that is there hmm? all right so first one is root chakra muladhara your ankle right ankle on your left knee press your right knee to the ground so you're pressing on the spinal cord and you're focusing being mindful on to the lowest level of your chakra which has got the reserve of all the energy that you require or which has the potential for you to tap into the abundance but it just sits in reserve form you need to be able to activate it if you don't know how to do it then it just gets wasted in your lifetime you get the minimal expression of it in in terms of your source so procreation so you, you can procreate yeah as humans or any species even plants is by seeds animals and humans so the power comes in a very minimal or innate manner at a minimal level of your survival instinct and most people or 99% of humans actually live at that any where they just don't take any or have no knowledge that's a problem uh, if some people have knowledge they don't do any practice so to move that energy requires requires discipline yeah abhyas it's called so it requires practice for you to actually 
really be able to move it. The more you move upper level, the more you are going to actually benefit of in other aspects of what you can actually achieve. Because the, there's unlimited, infinite possibilities. So this muladhar in a physical manner, so these are the exercises, if you focus on it, if you watch Sadhguru, if you watch you know, advanced yogis and then they're always pressing onto their source of root chakra energy center in terms of having that focus. Right, so the second part, we use this asana called Titli asana or butterfly pose, which opens your thighs, basically. So it's a groin area. The second energy center is called Swadhisthana. So Swadhisthana is to do with your attachments to life, like sensual pleasures, basically. Again, at a minimalistic level, it's for survival. So fight, fight, flight response happens from the root chakra, uh, 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 your attachment to either taste buds, your ears or you know sound, what kind of music, what kind of smell, all these things are linked to this second chakra which is Swadhisthana. So at a minimal level, at a, at a very baseline, standard level, every human being has this possibility like animals have. But you are a human, you can't be just restricted to the minimal that you have and because you have the freedom and creativity being a human as opposed to animal you have that opportunity to actually tap into the 90 percent that is never used in your life so if you keep practicing on it and again being mindful and knowledgeable and then do practices which are based on vedas basically principles through yoga shastra through rishi patanjali who wrote this as a treatise so that people can actually follow it. So you, you have to spend some time, read and then do some practices. Okay, so that's Swadhisthana. Now, the third one is called Manipur. So bring your legs together now towards yourself, sitting straight and now take your head down and touch the ground in front of you. So. What it does, it's now pressing on your belly button. So that's where the third chakra energy system is, which is called Manipur or solar plexus. So solar plexus is, as you go up, as you keep going up, you are expressing more power in terms of ex aligning yourself uh, in being able to achieve more as a human being as opposed to just being uh, living at a very animalistic level okay so manipur is what actually gives us this power or ego so when you're a child like after two years as you start growing up your perceptive power by using your senses it helps you develop ego in yourself you know? so you start becoming independent basically so what you smell taste eat and all these things how that's a child grows and the brain waves are very low at that time, like in delta wave. Um, so the, you like a sponge, basically it's acting like a sponge and it's absorbing everything. So early on in life, that's why the exposure of whatever culture and tradition and uh, whatever background you are very important because the child will become that what is exposed to because it comes with this very open mind with brain waves, which is going to just absorb anything and everything that's nearby. So that's what's the prevailing culture now. So you listen to whatever music when you are young and you are around. And, and because we've forgotten really about other things of life, except for having a house, some bit of bread and butter and a cow or something, that's all you focus. And there's no problem with that. That's essential kit for survival of life but that's not all that a human life is that is the problem so that ego self in manipucha solar plexus is what drives us as we grow older and through teenage years into our 20s and and it is it helps us uh, study have a degree start a job and things like that it actually is the 
at a very basic level you are achieving and most people think that whatever you acquire from your young days is your personality but the personality was created by you by absorption of the surroundings around you so you, it's not truly yourself but it is what was ex you were exposed to and in many times it's very limited and maybe a lot of wrong things as well so the problem happens is later in life after 27 years it one of the things that starts expressing itself in human beings after 27 years of life once you've gone through this a phase of uh, ego reaching its really really top level and plateauing it and then all the uh, music and nightclubs and all these things are now getting you are you're just feeling that's enough of it and there's some something about it that you don't want anymore of that and after 27 years that's what starts happening then that ego becomes a problem in the self right because you keep living by that ego then it becomes even more you are more rigid to your belief systems and not open to anything and at the same time you are not enjoying life of that loud noise and music and prevailing culture because you are now a decade younger group is coming with another level of uh, entertainment at a very basic level and you are becoming now sidelined so that's where the problem starts then you can't you are not able to find where you are fitting because and people become very restrictive they either in a gang though they start becoming either alcoholic or they become whatever they need or try and help themselves which usually most of the time is they don't understand what's happening it's but because of the lack of really knowledge and practice that you now become frustrated within yourself and ego is holding on to yourself saying no no this is who you are but why are you unhappy you need to do this more and more you so it's rigidity of life comes in in the, in at that phase after 27 years of phase while it was very helpful in the younger life now it becomes a problem and it's a problem because you don't know the next chakra which is at the heart level so for the heart one so push your neck down go on the side touch your knee with your like forehead go on the back go right full 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 motion so circular motion go round and round you put your attention to your heart so that a heart level is where then you are now going to move beyond the first three basic level of survival instinctive energy centers into something which is required after 27 years of life which is you to reassess yourself as to really why are you still frustrated after having a degree after having a work you are in a relationship but you are not still finding peace in your life and you are thinking what is the bigger meaning of life and it comes from this level which is at heart level so do three times go three clockwise and then go do the same thing anti-clockwise pressing on physically onto your heart area the heart area crosses the ego part and you now start realizing that the source of happiness the peace the joy everything that it helped through your younger days up to your up to 25 26 now why are you aren't happy with that is because that was only external things it fitted the ego by sensual perceptive uh, signals that you are getting but now you are coming to a stage that your body as like in other parts of your physiology is now telling you that is not all that is which is all very external to be really finding joy peace happiness fulfillment and then beyond that health wealth wisdom it is actually you become intuitive you have to turn that angle from external base source of absorption to now becoming intuitive meaning you have to go slowly inside towards yourself that's where the heart chakra comes in because heart is to do with humility heart is to do with humbleness 
Heart is to do with compassion. Heart is to do with empathy. Heart is to do with understanding others' pain, sorrows. Heart is to do with gratitude. Heart is to do with forgiveness. Heart is to do with appreciation. That is, that doesn't come from outside. It comes from inside. So that's why it's very difficult to develop because while you have spent about 25 years of life mainly based on external sensual perception and that's what your personal trace becomes into your personality, you are you're not going to reassess and you're going to just believe in that and keep fighting. It's very difficult to live a life. So you either go into using alcohol as a cover up or drugs or being in a gang, or trying to do things. Um, but again, they have short term uh, sports. So these, the, how long can you keep doing that? They might give you another five years, maybe up to 35, maybe up to maximum 40. After that, you are actually left alone. And you're not going to be ready. If you're not knowledgeable and not going to do something about it, it's a huge problem. And you're all young children in homes all see through their parents. They all give comments about their parents and uh, uncles and aunties and neighbors. You know, what's wrong with these old people? Actually, they don't want to be like that, but this is the issue. That's what I'm sharing. Because they themselves are helpless. Because they don't have the knowledge. And they don't know the how the body is changing. And the bigger picture of being a human indirectly is reminding them to go intuitive, to look inside you rather than stop this uh, dependency that we did on to Westfield shopping mall, to online things of ordering, uh, just external based things. It's not working anymore. So it's actually not the fault of even the parents or uncles or neighbors or the older people. It's just that the system never gave this knowledge to understand the body itself. So this is what I'm sharing. So we take the knowledge because without knowledge, there's no hope. Knowledge, then you, the good thing about this thing is that we can change our personal traits, which means you can change your personality, which means you can become a person, a different person from what you were when you're growing up in a different circumstances of what you're exposed to into something that is more appropriate when you are older and more fulfilling and actually fulfills the bigger goals of a life being a human being. Okay, so that's what the heart needs to be really, really brought in. And the next one at the throat level, so move your neck now. Go do this exercise, so go clockwise again, move it in a circular motion gently. And then go anticlockwise. It's called throat chakra or vishuddhi chakra. V means complete. Shuddhi means cleanliness. So how do you move from this ego based self, which is which was very helpful early in our lives, now to heart based living? You utilize this throat level of chakra, which is breathing exercises. Apart from this asana, so physical exercises that we're doing, you use these breathing exercises where you slowly, over time, with practice, move your ego by self into a heart-based person of compassion, humility, humbleness, empathy, yeah? sharing, caring. And you realize that when you do this Vishuddhi Chakra exercises, you become intuitive. Your right side of brain is now matching the left side of brain because the left side is very objective. It only lives by logic. And not everything is logic and objective. You have a brain, but you can't see your mind. You have gravity all around that we, all the planets follow this rule and we follow the rule, but we can't see gravity. There are many things that you can't see, but you have to feel and you accept things. So that is what happens after you imbibe or with practice, slowly move yourself from this ego self into a heart by living. It's a very beautiful feeling. The earlier you start practicing, the better it is. That's why in olden times, the children were from third, uh, from eighth year at least to about teen years, 
they was they went into what's called a gurukul system what knowledge the knowledge that i'm sharing they were already given that and imagine and understand at that time it's like a sponge a child absorbs all the thing so you give them any knowledge they absorb and if you get the this knowledge the good knowledge of how to live a life up to 100 years probably they would absorb that too and they would not be looking after 27 years of life being frustrated and don't know what it is is it alcohol or food or this so you are you just running around so that system when it fell off it has really caused a problem so we we get educated in a very limited manner so this is the other aspect of being educated and uh, because life is we all see through you you'll see through your parents basically every child will see through their parents because if they are not ready their life after 30 35 40 and a child grows by the time they grow up into teen and 20s the parents are into 40s it's very obvious in every family why the parents are struggling so much so it is a system which has failed them but it is the laziness of the parents too that they don't want to find anything more substantial to actually help them live their life so it's a father's day it's appropriate that i shared some information in terms of helping your father as a child understanding them first secondly with this knowledge help them because the good news is that we all can actually acquire these skills as it's never late it's not restricted to old people young people can do it male female any color any race nobody it's beyond religion it's actually a guide to your life so after you do the vishuddhi then it come to a forehead so where you put the tikka the behind that is called pineal gland it's the biggest wifi system so like a phone or a tv or your laptop mac whatever be it there is a wifi it gains you know you tune in to that wavelength you bring in information so wifi or like a radio or a tv you have to add, be at wavelength you can't be on fm and you are want to li- uh, listen to abc jazz or something you have to be in fm so th- your body also is like a smartphone but if you use the smartphone only for making a call what's the point having a smartphone might as well just have that old uh, hand analog phone because this if that's what you are going to use for so most of us so 99% of human beings use their body only for this limited capability like a smartphone this this body is but you don't know you don't know any you don't know how to use the apps in this body so these are the apps so antenna or pineal gland is what is your wifi connection to the abundance of universe which is the source but to uh, uh, obtain or tap into that source abundance requires first to tune into your antenna first so that wavelength has to be aligned with the like a phone or a tv then only you can get www dot wide well uh, world of web access to anything and everything that you can with your phone or laptop or tv your body also works in a similar manner so you need to do certain things where your wifi so after this vishuddhi heart chakra and throat chakra the mind level is what you have the option of now activating so i understand and then that beyond that on the top of your head is the the uh, chakra on the top if you reach there you are in the source in the abundance you are merged with it all the time so this is the hope this is what i am sharing that the potentiality of, of everything and anything and especially in a positive manner that if you want there is a pathway and that religions were supposed to teach but religions failed miserably and left became more like a political movements to control people rather than give you that freedom and creativity and this understanding of who as humans we are in terms of unlimited infinite possibilities and capabilities this is what they were supposed to be teaching 
right? So there's a lot of good things through this thing. Um, but if you go the reverse, if you don't do this in a positive manner, this you stay at the lowest level of chakras and keep doing the wrong things, you become the most hardened criminal, murderer, whatever, whatever, whatever. That's how it happens. Because as I said in the beginning, you become what you keep thinking. And whatever level of energy center you are, it gets compounded. So it's not good just to be saying I will be neutral. But if you're at a lower level and your surrounding circumstances, your friends and what you watch and see, it's like a compound interest, how it works. That only will make you more negative, really become bad and worse in your thought processes, which is reflected through your body's illness, which is called disease state. So you get diseases of your brain, of your body. You mentally, because you are in a surrounding which is highly negative based on fear, anger, attachments, disappointment, anxiety, depression, all this, up, they become muddled up and your body system becomes muddled up in terms of illness. On the other side of the coin is, if you take the grow up to the heart level, have gratitude, have forgiveness, have sympathy, have compassion, have understanding, you positively manipulate your, even your DNA and you grow healthy, physically, mentally, and you get into this abundance of um, health, wealth, wisdom, whatever you need in a positive manner. Okay, so it is a choice and life is a duality will always be. It's the choice that we make actually is the freedom of being a human being in the first place. Okay, so these, these are the things that the whole yogic or Hindu system is based on how you can actually make yourself better. Now, pull your legs up. So, lift yourself if you can like this. Increase the strength of your abdominal muscles. As I say, diaphragm is more important muscle, most important muscle in your body than any other muscle. Okay, if your diaphragm is good, we're really, really aligning your organs in your internal organs very well. All right, so lift yourself up, up. Legs. Okay, lie down now and then do exercises. Legs up 45 degrees, hold one, two, three, four, five, touch the floor, back up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, touch the floor, back up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Open your legs, go outside in. Then in, out, okay? Go in circular motion. Keep doing. Now go up. It's called shoulder stand. Zarvangasana. One, two, three, four, five. All the way. Okay, so good exercise for muscles on the back. Or neck. Push, push up. On your legs. Get the gravity. Blood flow from your legs to your heart. Make it easier. Move. In. Now. Halasana, flop, push your legs all the way above your head and try to touch the floor. Push, push. One, two, three, four, five. Come up. Now, pawn hook, push your knee to your nose for right side, then left. Both legs, pull. One, two, three, four, five. Now lift yourself up, massage your back. Support yourself by holding your knee. Go up with breath up and down. Now push yourself on the right side of your tummy muscles, the left side. Go right, left one more time. Right and then left. Now push your ankles towards your bum, lift your bum up. Matrishasa, a kick side for your pelvic floor, bum, back. Push, push, one, two, three, four, five. 
Chakrasana now. Support your neck, lift your upper body, and see how far you go down. One, two, three, four, five. Now, support your neck with your hands, ankles together, knees together, twist your body. It's called Makarasana. Very good exercises for your back, yeah? Your back, back, and spasm, sciatica, and other things. So just do this thing. So go right, left, one more time, right side, and then left side. Variation of it is put your ankle on your right knee and push your left leg towards the right side while you're looking to the left. One, two, three, four, five, change side. Right ankle on your left knee, push towards the left side while you're looking on the right. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Now, Navasana or Bodhasana. Balance yourself, lift yourself. One, two, three, four, five. Come up. Gomukasana, cow pose. Push. Your ankle back, sit on your right ankle. Push your left ankle over your right knee. Twist your body, your right elbow behind left knee. And look at the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push your leg, our hands in the front as much as you can. Now lift your left leg up over your head, right leg from the back. Try and hold the fingers. One, two, three, four, five. And if you can touch the left knee, one, two. Three, four, five. Change side, right. Ankle over left knee. You're sitting on your left. Remember the root chakra? We keep pressing on it. Yeah. So if you watch, a Sadhguru always sits on it. Push your, and then push your left elbow. Now behind right knee. And then look at the back. One, two, three, four, five. Extend your hand. Left hand, one, two, three, four, five. Right hand above your head, left from the back. Hold your fingers, one, two, three, four, five. And then touch the knee by your nose, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, in this cow pose, Gaumukasan, you are twisting the entire body from your ankle right to the head. Just doing that one exercise is probably good enough anyway if you do it two, three times. At, in the morning, every day, that's it. You don't have to do all these asanas that I'm showing. It's just something I'm just sharing, but it's, you don't have time, you don't have to do all. Just do Surya Namaskar or this Gomukha asana, that'll be enough. All right, now sit down, rest. While you're resting, press onto your soles of your feet. Okay, grounding is very important, as I said in the beginning, the planes of earth and the atmosphere in them. Your body has electricity. Eh? So if you really want to understand your body at the deepest level, you have to understand it as Nikola Te Tesla said, energy, frequency and vibrations. Okay, that's the communication part of it. When I call, when I say Wi-Fi, that's how your energy level of your body actually system works. And that frequency, vibrations are in everything from inanimate objects like your stool, your anything that is there even. They don't have life in it, but the vibrations are there. So imagine the vibrations in living beings, plants, animals, and then human being the most advanced form of creation. So you come to that level. So this grounding, this is called, when you tap, this is tapping exercise, pressing onto the sole of your feet, by in a physical manner, to help your physical aspect of your body, the sen motor sensory neurons actually touch the brain. You get this neuronal con uh, connections and interactions. As I said, its spinal cord is the, the link for your brain to your environment around you. That's why we do all these flexibility exercises. So tapping this part or walking on a grass or sand or water, clean environment, bare feet is very helpful because you're connecting to the earth and the earth as it requires the electricity requires grounding. Huh? Every house is grounding. Even for purposes of light and things, electricity in a house, we ground it. So your body, if it's got one volt per uh, cell and we have 100 trillion cells in our body, how much electricity is there? So if you can't, as, as I keep reminding, knowledge is power. Okay, If you don't have knowledge, you have, don't have any hope. Understand your body, it's your body. It's not only a doctor's responsibility to know about someone's body. You, it's your body, you need to know this. So learn some basics of your system so that you can do something about it. Okay? So press, 
It's the sole of your feet, okay? So I press, you can either use something like a key tag or something, press on the sole, walk on it, and then massage your body. For the same reasons, massage is very helpful, that's why. Clapping, okay, so clapping again is pressing on the receptors. There are millions of receptors on palms and soles of your feet. So clapping, appreciation of someone else, understand it's not only appreciating someone else, but how much good you are doing to your body when you are clapping or saying namaste when you put your hands together like that. And you, that's why it's, it's said, if you give something, you get more. So life is dependent on that. Because if anything, humans are the only species that can't survive if, if not supported. So in terms of education, if you are left into a herd of sheep, you'll become a sheep or a goat or a, chick, or a dog even, if these parents are not there. So again, Father's Day it is, without parents, a human child can't become a proper even being. While a dog, will always be a dog, a cat, a cat, a plant, a plant, but human can't. We are dependent on being taught things. So, so, so understand this, okay? So this tapping, appreciation, giving is very important. And as I said, the human beings are the only species that won't survive. If there were not earthworms, we won't have proper soil. If there are not cockroaches and other things, or snakes and other things, they, you won't create clean the environment. They are there for reason. But they don't need us. Okay, so you, even a plant doesn't require us. But we do. If there are not enough trees, there's not enough oxygen. The, all these other animal species that are there, they are supporting us. So we should forget about this thing, the masters of the being a master bully. We are dependent on them. So that's why I'm saying appreciation, clapping, saying namaste. When you give, you receive. This is the principle of how human growth happens. So while the ego self was of, of us has made us think we are the biggest bully of this earth itself, actually we are irrelevant in terms of the bigger creation that is on earth they don't need none of them need us we need but all of them actually from earthworms to everything that there there is so okay so learn so it's gratitude comes by by clapping by appreciation and then it gives you benefit of stimulation so press this on the right side this radial artery this there is a blood vessel between your bone on the wrist and the tendon learn how to press on it so if you do it 17 times every day, according to Vedas, Ayurvedas, you increase your longevity, increase your telomere length, your DNA functions better, you can increase vitality, good health, blood flow. These grounding exercises actually separates the oxygen molecules in, in our body so that the surface area is more exposed to binding of oxygen and without oxygen, we don't have energy. But if you don't do grounding and these exercises, the red blood cells are in clumped, like balls. They're not binding the oxygen together. Now there's science to actually, to show you these things that I'm talking about now. Before it was just written in the Vedas and the Hindu books. Now there's science to show these these are the impacts of what happens what i'm talking about all right now so acid base balance so this is the exercise you do okay so this ankle uh, sorry elbow get your thumb hits on top of this shoulder there's a bone called acromion so hit that like in a jerk again to 17 times 17 number 17 times you do something it becomes registered in your brain that's why you do it that many times or if you practice something for six weeks, it becomes like a personal trait to you, a personality in yourself. Yeah? As I said, like 27 years of age, that's when it, all these things it starts, you start searching for bigger meanings. There's numbers, there's how many, the, the body, basically, as I said, 
it requires that much of input in it and repeated times in a manner, in a very conscious manner, then you can change yourself. That's how it happens. All these exercises that your involvement in what we are doing, they all aid towards actually bringing this change. All right, now use your muscles in your hand and press on your forehead. Okay, so use this muscle, thin muscles. Go around your head, on top of your head, around your eyeballs, your cheek, your chin, sides of your face, your neck, upper chest, back of your neck, and then your hands. Okay, so if you practice that, 99% of your stress accumulation happens around this area, the head, the face. That's why you become very old very quickly. You know, people who are stressed, it's very easy to see on the face of a person because it all builds in here. And these some tapping exercises are very effective in actually disentangling all this accumulation that starts happening and causes a burden and exhaustion. Not in, in, in terms of only utilizing of your energy by brain, but by accumulation of this negativities all around this muscle. So practice these things. There has no side effect. If you don't believe in it, there's no side effect, but there's only, just practice it. You, you feel it. What's the benefit of it? All right. Now, facing the floor now, the exercises that we do now go the other way around. So you can do either plank or you can do push-ups 100 times, whatever you can do. So if you can't do push-ups 100 times, just be in the plank position. So I'll do it 100 times now. Right? Go. Lie down flat now, push your hands above your neck and push your legs downwards. One, two, three, four. <coughs> Relax yourself on your thumb, elbows supporting your jaw, and now bring your ankles towards your bum. Keep moving. One, two, three, four, five. Push yourself up. On the right side, look at the ankle on the right side. One, two, three, four, five. Ten side, left side. One, two, three, four, five. Snake pose, Sarapasana. Bind your hands together, ankles together. Twist your body to the right side. Now go to the left. Again, right side. <coughs> left side. One more time, right. And left. Whew. Now. Hands by your side, lift your legs up now. One, two, three, four, five. Touch the ground, back up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Touch the ground, one more time, up, push it back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. Mm. Now, hold your ankles, pull towards your bum, both ankles, lift yourself up with breath, go up, and then as you breathe out, come down. One. <coughs> go side to side, right, left, twist your body, right side, left side, one more time, right side, left side. <coughs> now lift your ankle, left ankle, makarasa, twist your body. Hold with your right fingers, pull as much as you can. One, two, three, four, five. Change side. Lift your right ankle. Hold with your left fingers. Push one, two, three, four, five. Now, support your right knee and lift yourself in this manner. One, two, three, four, five. Left side, same thing. One, two, three, four, five. Just be on one knee now, right side. 
Balance yourself. One, two, three, four, five. Change side. On the left side, do the same. Just go on left knee. Push your right leg up. Support your upper body with right hand and then push your left hand straight. One, two, three, four, five. Now be on your fours. Hands rest on your knee. Breathe in, go down. As you breathe out, come up. Push your tummy in and rotate clockwise. Then do anti-clockwise. Let's keep doing for a few times. One, breathe in, up, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Bala for child pose. Be on your knees. Push yourself down. Push your hands up. And then push your touch your touch to the uh, head to the forehead to the ground. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse namaste. Push your hands on the back. Make the namaste wrist position and touch the floor with your forehead. One, two, three, four, five. Be on your knees. Sirasan. Push yourself backwards. Hands up your neck. Hold your ankles on the back. Push yourself as far back as possible. One, two, three, four, five. Now sit on your ankles and push further. Backwards. One, two, three, four, five. And the final third stage of this yoga asana is going all the way back and touch the floor with your back of your head. Go down. One, two, three. Ah, come up. Sitting on your knee, this is called Vajrasana. Sit in this, in this manner. Use your fingers like together. Tips, put, put at the ego chakra. Yeah, at the belly button. Breathe out and bring your forehead to the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty. 15, 16, 17. Come up. Use your left hand. Now increase pressure more. Press the right fingers even more. One, two, three. Come up now with your right fingers. Press the left hand on your belly button. Go down. Breathe in, come up. Now along your thighs at the level of your belly button. Put your fingers there, there's kidneys and other organs. Put them together and then breathe out as you go down. Breathe in and come up. Keep sitting in Vajrasana in this position. Extend your hands, keep your neck straight. Move your eyeballs towards the fingers on the right side. One, two, three, four, five. On the left side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go diagonally up on the right side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Left side downward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Left hand up in the corner. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right hand downwards on the right side in the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Horizontal again. Right side. One, two, three, four, five. Left side. One, two, three, four, five. Hands. Up. Thighs look far away. And then tip of your nose far away. Tip of your nose far away. Tip of your nose. Go clockwise 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12. Mm -hmm. Anti clockwise 12, 9, 6, 3, 12, 9, 6, 3, 12, 9, 6, 3, 12. Now keep sitting in Vajrasana. Now move your neck very softly clockwise three times. Nice and soft way. Have your attention here. 
and then go three times anti-clockwise feel the relaxation that you feel now after exercising doing these simple things now pull your wrist upwards one two three four five downwards on the left side one two three four five right side upwards one two three four five downwards one two three four five now make a fist move your wrist outside in and inside out your shoulder in and out and rotate and out in in your shoulder joint now hold your hands push it on the right side and pull it towards the left side okay now lie down lift yourself up without using your hand all right so trying to develop your abdominal muscles right so lie down up get up like this without hand support now stand and do exercises standing up okay so first thing open your hands feel the energy that surround you you know the wi-fi is talking about you know how phone detects all these wavelengths there's energy around us okay so feel it okay so move your hands breathe in and out feel feel the environment breathe in deeply feel your lungs properly and release all that air from the lungs not only chest breathing abdominal breathing it's called okay so deep <sighs> jump stop jumps one two three four five six seven eight nine now breathe deep ah oh, feel it be mindful this is what's called being in the moment okay the whole trick is about being in the present, be in the moment and see the difference that it brings to your life. If you don't let yourself be in the moment, you'll only either worry about what happened last night or day before or you have a stupid day dreaming about tomorrow when it doesn't matter anything. If you are now, you can create tomorrow. Okay, so this gives you this mindset of breath that's why it's very powerful not only it gives you oxygenation and exercises your organs in your tummy brings down your cortisol and other things but it actually makes you be in the moment be now what it is open your hands feel it feel the air feel the energy move now stand on two legs become like a tree it's like tree pose yeah Bridge asana is called like a tree. Be strong like a tree. Beat a storm, tsunami, drought or whatever. It just remains. It faces whatever it's thrown at it. Don't complain about being too hot, weak, too cold or anything. Look at around you how, how the other living beings survive. If you have the habit of complaining about everything, you'll never be happy in any, with anything in life. Learn. So a tree stands like that. That's why we do this pose. Be on one leg now. So when you become focused, you can stand on one leg, on your toe now only. Because your mind is more powerful than your body. If you focus, change side, change leg. On one leg, on the left side now. Straighten up. One, three, four, five. So learn from the trees. That's what it is. Okay, so all these environments and seasons and things are there for stimulation of your body, different fruits in different seasons. You have to learn how to eat what is in the season, not out of the season things as well. So learn your body, then you know what to put in your body. Eh? Alright, so push. Warrior pose. Now push your right leg towards right side, hand straight. One, two, three, lift up, all the way up. Now left leg is up. Balance yourself again. Balancing. Left side, do the same thing. Push, lift up, and just on one leg, balance it this way. It's all a focus. So if you learn how to focus, you become intelligent. That's all intelligence is. If you can be in the moment, in one place, in one thing, you, your performance becomes better. 
So it's focused. So breathe in deeply, in, out. Trikonasana, trig trigonometry. Yeah? So push yourself right, hand touches the right ankle. Look at your fingers on the left. Yeah, up, up, push. Now go down. Bend your leg, it's called Chandra Namaskar. So the moon, the position of it, expression of gratitude. You know the waxing and waning of the moon of different uh, times has different impact on your body. And if you really focus on that, you remove things. When the moon is coming, becoming full moon, you have good ideas. Learn to ha have thoughts and processes. When it goes dark, there's no point. Life is like that. Life, as I said, it's duality. But when it's moon out, have more thought processes, have plans of life, it all this. Okay, so push up, up, up. It's expression of gratitude. That's a, as you know, the whole plant kingdom actually lives by the moon. All the things that we eat and they grow because of the reflection of the light from the sun onto moon, onto earth. The gravity, the ocean movement, the waves. Okay, So go down, bend your left knee, come down, push yourself up. One, two, three, four, five. So learning from sun, moon, positioning, expressing gratitude of the balance of how things are happening on earth. So push up, up, in, out, up. Keep exercising, one, two, up. <coughs> now, Anjali Asan, see this pose. So, bend your knee, go down, all the way. Hold yourself, come up. Now, hold your earlobes. This is very good for neuronal activity, yeah? Keep practicing every time. So, like squats and holding when you are sitting down. And holding your ears gives you increase the interaction of your neuronal cells so you don't get become demented as you grow older and squatting is very useful because of the utilization of the muscles the big muscles of your body go down up again one more time and hold it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen come up now, exercise for your knees. Go clockwise three times and anti clockwise three times. Pelvic exercises again, same three times clockwise. Simplicity of things that you do in life are the, the magic changes that happen. Not too complex, not too complicated. It's where the ego comes into. And ego will cause downfall. Being at anything, gym, sports, your life. If you learn to live by heart, which is simplicity, which is compassion, things happen in a much easier manner and in a more fruitful manner, which not only keeps you grounded, but increases your brain, heart, and body connections. That is how why it works all the time. Being simple, being uh, genuine, being compassionate. Okay, so that that's why it works. All right. Now, the last exercise is Surya Namaskar. So Surya Namaskar is a 12th position exercise. Again, one of the, if you don't do anything, if you do this exercise, there will be enough for you. But do it daily. If you can do minimum three times, if you have more time, 10 times, 100 times, you get a full cardio, full workout then at that level. But whatever time you have time, do something if you are expressing gratitude to the sun. Without sun, the source, the energy, Earth is not going to survive, and we won't survive. So learning to express gratitude to, to surroundings, to your pets, to your neighbors, to the trees, to the plants, to the birds, and 
obviously sun, moon, which is more obvious to you. Drifts in these positive vibrations in your body. You become more tuned into receiving them. Because half of the exercises are only requesting what you want in life. The other half, 50% is, if you don't know how to receive, it doesn't mean that the universe is not giving it to you. Because if you ask something, like meta just changes form, the activity is already going to happen. But are you in tune to receive it? This is the problem for most people. They do only 50% of the work. And that 50% is not actually done properly either. But there's 0% in knowing how to receive it. To receive, you have to become intuitive. You have to become right side brain depend, uh, dominant. You need to activate your antennas to receive it. That's why these activities are very important. So breathe in, stand up. As you breathe out, push your hands up, one. And then breathe out, touch your toes, push your right leg back in the plank position. Asthangasan chin. Knee and toes are touching the ground, the left of all the body are otherwise lifted. Bring up what's called Bhujangasana on this way. Now Parabat, mountain pose, push your right leg up, followed by left. Bring the left leg in as you breathe out, come up. Breathe in. Now do the same from the left side. Breathe in, push your hands up, breathe out. Touch your toes, left leg this time, back, right leg, both legs. Asthan, Bhujang, Parvatasan, left leg this time first, then right, follow, right, pull yourself up. One cycle completed. Now, second cycle again from the right side, breathe in. One, push your hands up. Two, three, touch the floor. Four, plank position. Five, Bhujang, six, Parvatasan, Asthan. Push your right leg, left leg in, come up. All the way now, second cycle from the left side, breathe in and out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So second cycle completed. Now the third cycle again from the right side we start. Breathe in, breathe out. Push, breathe in and out, touch the toes, right side, plank position. Asthangasan, Bhujangasan, Parvatasan, right, followed by left, push your left leg in, all the way up. Now, left side, breathe in, breathe out, in and out, touch your toes, left leg goes back, plank position, chin, knee, toes are touching ground, the rest is lifted up, and then mountain pose, left, followed by right, push your right leg in, all the way up. So we've only completed three cycles. Your heart rate is already around 150 now. <sighs> Imagine doing 10 of this. Or 100, what will happen? And it involves all your muscles, your joints, your tendons. It's a complete exercise. And in the safety of your own weights, in your own environment, you're not damaging your knees, you're not running on a hard surface. Okay, so those who made these Rishi Munis of ancient Hindu religion, them would have been very intelligent people to create these steps. None of this is mine. It's all from the Vedas and um, Rishi Patanjali's text called Yogshas. All this is from there. Right on. Now balancing yourself, right, you can lift yourself and on your hands, do it. If you can't, don't worry, make sure it's, it's a sturdy, you know, flow. So you don't fall over, lift yourself like this. And balance on yourself, on your in, uh, elbows now, lift. On your knees, like this way on the sides of your knees, on your tummy, right, right, 
right now the second last asan posture is head stand if you can't do head stand just do shoulder stand all right so i do the head stand all right if you can't do it just do the shoulder stand lift yourself up balance let the blood flow from your toes to the heart heart to the brain visualize really good for your back neck muscles let the blood flow all right and the last last asan pose is called dead man position so you lie down flat like a corpse all right and you deserve to relax so there's about 40 minutes of good physical exercise each of your joints it's not about your legs only one day no it's head to toe within this time period every joint every tendon every muscle beyond your body we include our mind in it <laughs> it's a complete package okay lie down last exercise So you deserve to rest, uh, relax now. Rest. Hands by your side. Your neck straight, facing upwards to the ceiling. Hands little separated from your body. Legs little separated. Now we combine with what's called yoga nidra. Nidra means sleep. So sleep is basically a default mechanism to heal your body. That's why you need to sleep for between you know seven and eight hours, and the right time of sleep, which is between ten p.m. and three four p.m. a.m. Not our other time. So phases of Earth itself has an impact on the circulation of your brain fluid. So timing of sleep is very important. Waking up is very important on time. So you can't sleep on time if you're watching TV and other things and not eating before sunset. So the rule is to eat before sunset. So all those activities are required for proper sleep. And most people don't get proper sleep. And if you don't get proper sleep, you don't get healing in your body. So while eating habits, drinking habits. are really obvious to people bad sleep habit contribute to damage your health as well in the same way so you have to look after your sleep if you don't get the proper sleep for other reasons work and other stuff then you can do this exercise it's called yoga nidra so while you are lying flat now you close your eyes and i take you through the journey of the five phases of your sleep basically if you have a proper sleep and proper time when you sleep then you get these five different phases in a sleep through which healing of your body happens and you get the opportunity to communicate with the subconscious because activity is happening in your body and to the universe but because you are sleeping you're not conscious you don't know the messages other things that you can receive because as i said it's a reflex mechanism and it works at a very basic level for survival like your procreation your excretory function your eating habits your survival but if you don't actively want to learn and do practices you can't get more of it same way with sleep it will heal you for basic level of survival if you follow the rule of sleep but because you are unconscious you can't get the messages of the universe but in your nidra you have that ability because you are consciously doing a deep sleep and you can go through the cycles of the phases of early sleep rapid eye movement dream state then beyond deep state and that correlates with different wavelengths 
beta to alpha to theta to delta and to gamma. So different waves that go through when you are subconscious. But yoga nidra in this shavasana gives you this opportunity to actually learn to receive messages because you're conscious. So breathe deeply through your nostrils, follow the breath all the way through your throat into the lungs. The lungs has this six to eight hundred thousand alveolar sacs where the oxygen goes in from the air home into the blood. And I talked about grounding and tapping why when it binds to hemoglobin, red cells need to be free. If they are aggregates and clogged in balls, there are less of them to take the oxygen. So visualize that you have nice, good red blood cells, they're binding hemoglobin, taking to your heart, heart is pumping within microseconds, from brain to your toe, everything is being given energy in terms of oxygen. Breathe deeply. Visualize it, is your body. It's like anything in life, you don't give attention, you don't get any affection. That's the rule. With your partner, with your neighbors, with your friends, with your pets, with the plant. So why is the exception to your body itself? Because the body has trillions of cells. They need attention. That's why this is powerful. When you put attention to it, and if you add intention to it, that you require request to perform better in terms of oxygenation to your brain, you become more intelligent. Then you get in return the affection and the blessings. It's a two-way thing. It's not to be taken for granted like anything in life. So breathe deeply. Visualize. It's called prat. And there are 10 different types of pran, shaktis, or energy, forces in this body. The first one is this oxygenation process. As you breathe out, now press your belly button and visualize the blood flows all the way from the toes to the heart, from the brain to the heart, from the heart to the lungs. The reverse process happens now. The carbon dioxide and other gases become air and are coming out through your breath. You have to visualize it. You have to put mindfulness. If you want to cleanse your body, you have to be involved with it. If you don't put intention and attention to it, it's not going to function. It's only going to do it at a very basic level. Anything in life, everything functions in that manner. And this is very serious part of your body. So you, while you have to survive in a relationship, if you don't have attention, that's a very physical level, you don't get any peace. Imagine if you don't look after your body, what will happen to your body? Breathe again deeply. Follow through the nose, through the heart. Now the second was called apan. Third pran is called saman. Now bring your attention to the belly button, the ego place, the driving force. It's reflective of sun. Because of sun, there is gravity. The earth orbits around the sun, tilts. Because of this nuclear fission, the energy that is produced by sun, survival of our planetary systems, the body has similar type of sun activity. It's the heat, it's the fire, it's called Agni, Saman Pran. It drives, as long as there is heat, you are alive. When it becomes cold, you are dead. It's quite, quite binary, actually, that part. So, impact of sun. That's why you wake up with the sun. You visualize the blue light in the morning. It produces serotonin and other good hormones, antioxidants. As the evening comes, visualize the red light. It produces melatonin in you. The sun has an impact on you. It gives a glow, the beauty of your face. You can understand the vitamin D absorption from the photons of light. All other universe components have these impacts of photons on your body. The body is a receiver. 
So become involved. Cool? Saman Pran. Breathe again. Deep breath. Visualize through your nostrils. Now push yourself as you breathe out from your belly button right up to the chin. The fourth prana is called Udan. And Udan is reflective of the ocean or fluidity. Like earth is surrounded 70% by water, your body has 70% fluid, different types of fluid. So why we move our spine? Because there's a fluid in the spine. It's called cerebrospinal fluid. It washes the brain. There's a gyrolymphatic system in the brain. It's a totally different type of lymphatic system of brain. None, all other bodies have lymphatic but in the brain, there's a different mechanism. So if you move your spines in different manners that we do those asanas, is because of this CSF fluid moving within the brain, washing it. If you are sitting couch and don't move your spine, the fluid doesn't move even once a day through your spine. So you, you understand there's a reason, there's signs that if you don't wash it, like don't shower your body outside, you'll smell and get diseased. And you are sitting couch and not moving your spine, what will happen to your brain? You'll become demented. Your neurons won't function. That's why we do these flexibility exercises. It's this fluidity. The brain is washed by fluid, your eyes produce tears, emotions, your mouth has saliva, digestion can't happen otherwise, your nostrils are lined by fluid which gives this coolness to the air as you breathe in, your lungs are surrounded by fluid, your heart, apart from pushing the blood, it's surrounded by fluid, each of your organs in your tummy is surrounded by fluid. A baby grows into an ocean of fluid in mommy's uterus. The fluidity is the transmission mechanism of electricity in your body. And the best fluid is water. Not mixed with alcohol, with sugar or fizzy drinks or all these things. Natural water, coconut water, fresh water from sources. If there is running water, so much the better. Water is very important to this body. So breathe again deeply. The fifth pran, as you breathe out, push yourself from your chin area right to the top of your head. It's called Vyan Pran. And Vyan Pran is reflective of the flow of the blood through your body. The 40,000 kilometers of blood vessels in your body, the nerves, at the physical level, forget about the subtle level that you can't even see through your eyes, which called the Nadi system, 22,000 of them are there. All of them function through this body. It's not a machine. Every single cell has its own brain. So you have to be connected to it. They need attention. And if you put the right intention, then, then you get the result. That's the result. If you leave it to randomness and random sensual perception, whatever information goes in, it will produce the wrong things then. So you have to take responsibility of this body. Breathe again deeply. And then there are five other prans called Na Kurma Karikal Devda Dharanjay. Peristalsis, food movement, hiccups, eyelid movement, birth process, all other functions happen. There are different types of this pran shaktis in this body. Breathe deeply. Now, the second subconscious activity, apart from your breath, that happens is your digestive function. So, breath. You only have the control is in terms of how you breathe. If you learn how to breathe properly, you have some control in terms of getting output of yourself. But 99% is subconscious. It, because it happens, you don't care about it. 
But if it didn't happen, you'll kill yourself. So the creator made it happen, but it's at the very basic level. So you have a choice. If you have a car, you can have a standard uh, lousy one, just uh, essential features, and it can still take A to B. But if you want a luxury car, you have to have extras in it. So you've got this basic car, a body that's given. Anything extra that you want, you have to activate it. So the second subconscious activity is the digestion. Your control is what you put in your mouth. Beyond that, you have no control. So you have to be very careful, extremely careful of what you put in your mouth. So animals and plants, because they are in a controlled manner, they know what to eat. A tree will only take out those minerals that the tree is supposed to produce. Whatever is a mango tree will only get those minerals. If it are not there, it won't produce a mango or apple or whatever. It is strictly in control of what it does. And you know about animals. If a pet is getting sick, it's because the humans are feeding them the wrong thing. They're feeding them the wrong chemically altered foods. They're giving them food which is not real. That's why animals get sick. Otherwise, a naturally bound animal in a free environment doesn't require a hospital or vet or anyone because they know how to look after themselves. It's only the human beings don't know how to look after themselves because we've been given the freedom. That's why we need hospitals and all this stuff because we don't use even our brain. Animal plants have innate ability to know and sense and smell and eat and clean themselves. But human beings, as I said in the beginning, without knowledge, they are most important useless creatures. Without knowledge, we are nothing. And because there is no right knowledge, that's why you need huge, huge hospitals. You need to understand your body, what you're putting in your mouth. Prior to that, you need to know your body. That's why we talk about understanding your body. And because you have the freedom and you really, seriously, you're not the bully of the universe and you have no right to kill anyone or anything. You didn't create any animals or anything. They have a life, they have a sensual perception like other human beings. Except for creativity is not there, that's the only thing lacking. We have creativity, power, freedom. Plants, fruits, other things, known blood flowing things are there to eat. You have to use your thought process in a proper manner, preserving soil, forest, this climate, cattle farming, injecting hormones, chemically altered things, feeding animals just for food and killing them, is not a very advanced society behavior. It's not about ideology, it's not about belief. It's about the system that we have. The digestion starts in your mouth, which requires different colored fruits, wholesome fruits to be eaten properly by chewing. So your blood pressure, your heart rate, your brain function and other things, the whole process starts in your mouth. That's what you need to feed. That's what you need to eat. Vegetables need to be cooked because the chemical processes is required. The only vegetables you can eat whole are cucumber and carrot. Every other thing needs to be cooked in a little bit of ghee or olive oil or coconut oil. But fruits need to be chewed whole, some, not into smoothies. Mixing with milk and things alters but wholesome fruits. We have very long intestine, 8 meters of large bowel, 2 meters of small bowel, 
It's a very long process. All cannibals, animal eating beings have very small intestines because the passage of food has to be more rapid. We have teeth system which is more horizontal. And we have 38 trillion bacteria which need prebiotics and probiotics. And bacterial population in our gut system determines our health, our mind function. So that is the reason, not ideology, not belief. It's a physiology of your body, the bacteria in our tummy, what happens to our body. That is the reason, apart from the ethics and morality of it, being a human, If they were not for LD Coles and Woolies, and if you had but butchery shops right in the middle of the town, do you think you'll buy those stuff? But instinctively in your human brain, you still have that feelings that no, it's a wrong thing to do. But when you cover it in a plastic wrap and add a red color to something, make it look good, you are fooling yourself. And we, we are fooling our life forever and ever. Okay, so go beyond, beyond the superficialities of corporate greed and other things. Understand this body. Because 70% of your immune system is in your tummy. There are more neuronal cells in your tummy than in your brain. 50% of your endocrine system is in your gut. So there is no it's not surprising that your immune system, when it starts dysfunction, your tummy is not balanced. So autoimmune diseases, allergies, asthma, lots of diseases. And now there's evidence to show if you start correcting your gut health, what's called microbial health, if you are sick, if the bacterial population is better, you get well very easily. Even cancers can respond to treatment but better when you have a microbial population corrected which is obviously like eating the right type of food. So if you have alcohol you are going to kill the bacteria, if you have freezy things you are going to kill them, if you have refined foods, fast foods, animal foods, all these things are anti-microbial population, the gut health. That is the reason why it should be done. So your responsibility is to be aware of what you put in your mouth. That's all you can do. But beyond that, you have no control. So breathe deeply. The third subconscious activity, which probably we have 0% control, is excretory function. The kidney microsecond, every microsecond is filtering your blood. It's working day and night like your heart, your lung. We talked about your digestive system. Kidney is taking out your toxins. So expressing gratitude, making sure you have right water, like water, not other drinks. Mineral water, you know, spring water and proper coconut water. So that your fluidity of the body is there to help with the filtration system. So sewer system and other toilets and things looks after our other byproduct. But what about your sweat? What about when we speak? What about all these gases that we produce? They are also a responsibility to look after. You see, animals, they know how to control plants, what they do. They have a system within them. The, even the mess that they produce, they are responsible for it. So yajna ceremony, the fire ceremony that we do has always been part and parcel of our civilization when to create this kind of cleanliness around your home, your environment, in your atmosphere, uh, in neighborhood. That is why it's done. The other thing is expresses, teaches you how to express gratitude for whatever little you have earned in your life. You express it by adding to the fire and fire is a source which actually makes into vapor and it goes beyond limitations of any boundary. That's why Yajna or Havan, that fire ceremony is done. But if we don't do these things, 
we are just neglecting the responsibilities of what our body is doing and our role within the in the surrounding that we live in so breathe deeply again now take your attention to your fingertips to your wrist bring it to your elbow to the shoulders back of your neck go down your vertebral column behind your bum behind your thighs behind your knee behind your calf right to the sole of your feet come in the front in the ankle the bones in the leg knee cap thighs the groin area visualize the nerve tracks that run along the spinal cord we talked about it's called meruban left side is called ida right side is called pingala in the middle it's called sushumna parasympathetic sympathetic motor sensory neuronal systems that runs along this spinal cord so positioning of moon has impact on it directly as we talked about the sun on your pituitary gland the circadian rhythm the hormone production so the pineal gland that wifi network your interaction to the universe its impact with the sun as the earth orbits on the pineal gland on your pituitary gland on your thyroid thymus bone marrow what's called stem cell each of us our body is totally replaced completely within a year skin sheds every 28 days liver every 6 weeks replace bone every cells in the body so what you feed will give you the next body in a different manner that's why you can change yourself it's not the same body so there is hope because if every cell is being replaced at least once a year so if you change your habit bad habit that's why they had impact on you so stop stop smoking stop drinking stop eating the wrong food your body next year will be growing by the ingredients that you put in so this is why there is hope as i said in the beginning if you want to change your thought processes there is always hope whatever we learned by default when we young and growing up can be changed and the physically as well as i said the body so there is hope all the time as soon as you make a decision and stick to it you can so eating habits your adrenal gland fight fight flight response you can't live by that forever it's only for emergency requirement but if you 16 to 18 hours of your day that's what you are doing your body will be busted but if you balance it by doing yoga nidra like this so yoga and being mindful then you give stimulate your vaso vagal tone which give, gives you this rest repair re, uh, creativity balance of this intuitive function your heart rate your blood pressure your brain function your peristalsis your liver your spleen kidney gall bladder all these organs are run by vaso vagal nerve stimulation they go through this parasympathetic subconscious activities that's why you have to learn this method not just believing this conscious self which is only about 5 to 10% 90% is subconscious and if whatever you've learned and acquired through your growing up days it's stored in the subconscious like your software and the hardware keeps expressing it through your conscious self but if you don't change the software the information and the data that's been put in you can't express something different that's why you have to relearn lots of things from eating habits to your mind thought processes then the expression that will happen will be at a different level the thing is it can be done at any stage in life that's why there's always hope the body itself gives you this opportunity so bone marrow mada maja asti so is balancing now bring your attention to the two eyes that you have what we perceive with the eyes less than 10% even with the ears with your taste bud with your listening so in animals are there to teach us this thing like a bird can see as far as the saturn's moon the titan it can see that far or deer or elephant can hear far away before any movement and can detect earthquakes the dog can smell me coming about 1 km away even knows i'm coming 
learn everything every creation is there so our limited ability of using our senses the animals are there to teach us to actually how to learn to utilize or increase the depth of these senses your eyes your, uh, your you know capability to listen to taste to smell because if you do that properly then you can express what you are talking what you are saying what you are doing with your hands your feet your reproductive organs your excretory organs they will be used in the right way then because they are the antennas of this body you have got the option of using this for the maximum goodness or you can let it be just at the random level whatever you do and get completely destroyed not only your physically physical body your mental body everything not only your life your parent your family's life your neighbor's life and you become a criminal and become a corrupt citizen even that's how it happens because if you leave it to randomness this will happen humans only progress by proper education so breathe deeply take your attention to the tailbone where we started root chakra the source the energy the more you are able to move this energy upwards the more you are able to then relate to the universe the infinite consciousness and you can align with the abundance and tap into abundance the second is swadhisthana so you are able to balance your desires and attachments because it's our desires and attachments the fear factor of losing the fear factor of not getting something causes all sorts of havoc in your mind depression anxiety you have that's very low level coming up manipur your ego self that i am the one i am right i am the one who made anything and everything in life how did you do you were not even born by yourself somebody taught you how to look after yourself feed yourself or clean your mess in your life even you didn't do anything in your life you just became a part of the process the teachers helped you learn why be say so what why are we boasting about what do you think about say our is ego so once you learn how to control that then only have the opportunity for your anahat heart chakra to be activated from living into a heart based person of compassion sympathy humility humbleness forgiveness patience tolerance that is where the greatness comes from not your boasting self not your ego self so you have to develop this as we develop it then you are allowed to go get into those antennas of comprehension of having remote healing remote uh, telepathy visualizations and manifestations uh, having a parallel connection you know your parallel self and beyond quantum leap quantum jumping there all this they are available but you have to fast refine yourself you have to develop these capabilities that your energy system in your body as it grows goes right to the top of your head or sahasra chakra that you are able to connect beyond this body the physical self because as i said 90% of it subconscious it's a subtle body so from the physical body you can go into the subtle body you can visualize yourself and move right like international space station then you can in the zero gravity you can see how earth spins then orbits from there it's it's obvious but for, when you are on earth nothing is obvious and for good reason because it will cause havoc if you could feel anything but it is the reality is there the rules of nature is always happening the distance of sun moon earth and within the milky way the sun with its nine planets is spinning around 220 km per second It takes 250 million years to make around around the star the sun goes around sirius and 300 billion stars like that in one galaxy they have 300 billion galaxies like this imagine the how huge the our creation is so who are we on the earth like not relevant like a dust particle in context of our milky way 
forget about 300 billion other Milky Ways. So that's how small we are. So understanding the greatness of the creation is part and parcel of actually opening up yourself in terms of humility and humbleness so that you align yourself because that's why it's very important to understand the creation. It gives you this, not only makes you understand your body, but it gives then this respect that we are actually really, really very misguided in terms of the bullying behavior that humans express. We are insignificant in context of the creation. So you know then how big the universe is, like Earth-like planets, like say Alpha Centenary is about four and a half uh, light years, which is one light year is about 10 million kilometers. So parallel self, time dilation, or event horizon, time, space, all these things are linear, not this yesterday, today, tomorrow, everything is happening at the same time. We make it rules to understand and get some logic into it. But the reality is, is now in everything. Or cosmic horizon, the quantum field, the unified field from which so there is nothingness, from which there is consciousness. Consciousness gives rise to mind, mind right, gives rise to this body, this physicality of it. So if you do the reverse and you reach the, what's called the oneness, then you are aligned with it. Then, and that requires your energy self. Physical body is, is having this feel and enjoying the creative, uh, the creator's creativity. So you can use your eyes and all the senses to visualize and feel it. But to, to go to the depth of it, you really need to be your energy self with the frequency vibrations. Then you connect to it. Right? So breathe in deeply and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and out. As you return yourself from your subtle body into this physicality of who you are, acquiring this information and now re-correcting your subconscious self, then your conscious self will, over time of repeated affirmations or repeated doings of the same thing, it becomes a habit in your life. So you have to do it for a time, for a while. Then it expresses itself. Otherwise, if you leave it to the randomness, then whatever you wear, whatever the data is within you, keeps expressing itself. So it requires an active self to re reprogram yourself, basically. All right. So that was yoga nidra. A sleep does to you, but without being conscious, that's why you don't get. You get the benefit at a physiological body level, have a rest and energy and some healing. But if you did in a conscious manner, as what what we did now. It's very powerful because you are doing it actively, consciously. All right, so breathe in. Now, breathing exercises are really one step above the asanas and the pra on the yoga nidra because they really involve your internal organs, your heart, your brain, your digestive system that we talked about are directly related to your breath processes. So breathing properly is very important. Okay, so the first exercise is called Bhastika Pranayam. So sitting straight, keeping your spine straight for all those reasons that I explained earlier. You breathe in using your abdominal muscles, not your chest. So breathe in deeply, push your belly button out. Breathe out, push your belly button in. And you'll soon realize it's much, much more difficult. It's easier to run and go to a gym than to do breathing exercise because it requires the commitment to utilize your muscles deep within your tummy that usually doesn't happen so it's quite difficult so if you leave it to randomness again you have a shallow breath only from the chest half of the lung is not used your diaphragms are not used that's why the organs are not balanced so now, practicing this, it takes time. 
your organs are balanced your parasympathetic your subconscious vasovagal tone is stimulation happens so your cortisol levels are properly balanced your hormones are secreted in a better way that's how it helps your allergy autoimmune diseases immune stimulation in a positive manner so that this is the science behind it why and how it works okay so do do this practice it take it will take some time in your life to learn these things but the earlier you start the better you will balance your body and it's very important as you get older because if we don't do it you'll get diseased very quickly after 50 years because young days you know it's it, it is okay it's surviving it takes 15 years of smoking to develop lung cancer heart attack and other diseases so if it takes 15 years for bad food bad um, smokes and other thing it's the same thing about 15 years of bad thought processes if you put your mind to bad thoughts negativities of life it takes about 15 20 years to have a detriment which is usually around 50 years age then you start showing in your body because then it, the cumulative effect of negativity will have impact on your body your dna your your hormone secretion your chemical mediators get imbalanced right bhastika pranayam so breathe in you can't last one minute it's very hard to do it that's why all other exercises are much more easier to do than doing breathing exercises again you can use your head push your up because use your muscles to the the more you use abdominal muscles the better so push your as you breathe in push the belly button out as you breathe out push the belly button in it empties the lung properly you get pro- more oxygenation you push the diaphragm muscles it stimulates and or balances the adrenal glands your pancreas gall bladder all these activities are happening See, after so many years I've been doing, still I I I can't do so many. It's it requires so much energy. So for most people who haven't done one time, they'll never want to do it because it's actually quite difficult to do it. But everything in life is like that. It's only the hardships, the difficulties, the sacrifice, the discipline that gives you rewards in life. If you just think things will happen goodness doesn't come in life like that it requires determination discipline focus and sacrifice all right so now the next one is called so you breathe deeply agni sa and take out all the breath and hold it as long as you can hold it's good So learning how to hold breath for a long time allows your mind to become static cuts out the 60 70000 thoughts that we get a day into one focus and focus is intelligence is power so this is 
like fasting you know if you do intermittent fasting it's very helpful because it gives rest to your body system of digestion and efficiency of absorption and if you did the right food you you become healthier same way anything where they sacrifice in life and discipline and in case of breath when you are able to hold breath faster uh, for for a while it increases your efficiency of utilization of oxygen your lungs your other body system the physiology of it the efficiency becomes better right so agni sir breathe in breathe out <laughs> hold it push your belly button out and in so over years now i can actually hold it for longer time in the beginning it was very hard to even hold it for even a few seconds it was so hard and some people yogic really saw me like swami dayanand then when people tried to kill him so many times he was able to save himself because he could be under water for long time for minutes and minutes and pest the people who wanted to kill him he would just pull them down and they can't survive as long as him under water so he was able to save himself many times like that so holding breath not only <coughs> increases your efficiency but there is real benefits of it in other ways as well <coughs> all right so agni sar again breathe in breathe out everything push your belly button in and out and hold the breath as long as you can Actually, it's quite rhythmic. After a while, because the peace that you get, the goodness of it really makes starts making things easier. Because you get real time benefits of it. The next one is called Pujay Pranayam. So the vibration activity that we called Vishuddhi Pranayam, how you can move from your ego self into the heart by living, where mind body coherence can happen. You. use this exercise okay so ujjayi so use the vibrations of your throat you can hear it your chin on your chest it increases the vibrations even more and when you're breathing out make your neck straight and close your right nostril and breathe out to the left
to feel these vibrations, yeah? Now, if you can breathe, uh, twist your tongue, breathe it, breathe in through the tongue if you can, twist it. <clears throat> and out through your nostrils. Now, close your mouth, but breathe in through your lips. Next one is called exhalation exercise or called Kapal Bhati. So you press your belly button in, the breath comes out. It creates a vacuum where breath in will happen automatically. Don't concentrate on that. Just concentrate on your exhalation or breathing out and have a sequence like every second, press your belly button like once and push your air out. Make it rhythmic. After a while, it becomes it's easier. In the beginning, it's very difficult because you are pulling all the muscles in your tummy on the sides of your uh, tummy, on the back, your neck. All these muscles are being pulled because you are focusing only on exhalation or breathing out. It's opposed to inspiration or inhalation we were doing so far. So concentrate on, so keep your back straight all the time. All right, that's so, all. Can find a support, a chair or a wall or something, keep your back straight. Because you want to keep your spine okay, as much straight as possible. So breathe out through your nostrils, then by pressing your belly button.
because probably when you reach this stage <coughs> after a few minutes then it becomes very rhythmic and because you get into this space of emptiness in itself there is no pain anymore the peace it gives you and the ability to relate uh, it just covers every other aches and pains that you are getting just so practice in your life you'll understand what i'm saying i i can't give everything can't be put into words you know? now do alternate nasal breathing from left in out to the right in to the right out to the left in to the left out to the right in to the right out to the left in to the left hold it nadi shodan out to the right in to the right out to the left in to the left out to the right in to the right भयंतर प्रीति कंप्लीट डीप ब्रेथ इन वाई प्रीति टेक आउट ऑल द ब्रेथ वाई कुंभक होल्ड द ब्रेथ एज यू टेक इट आउट एज लॉन्ग एज यू कैन क्लोज योर ऑफिसेस मूल बन जलंधन बन उदान बन होल्ड एज लॉन्ग एज यू कैन इफ व्हेन यू कैन एंड स्लोली ब्रेथ follow all the way from muladha root chakra right to the top of your head see your presence of you aligning with the your parallel self as a energy self in the universe so breathe deeply again and then breathe out hold mool ban jalandan ban udan ban and then slowly in from root chakra all the way as you breathe out align yourself with this pyramidal connection or the damaru shifts damaru shaped position back through your pineal gland to your heart breathe again move up all the way and beyond breathe out <coughs> return to the heart close mool ban jalandan ban udan ban hold in transit through all the way aligning yourself and as you exhale mool 
बन जलंधन बन उड़ान बन सो एक्टिवेट योर रिसीवर शिप रिसीवर मोड Now continue this into meditative phase. Again, get into the resonance, shaman resonance. संकल्प हम अपने विभिन्न दुखों को दूर करने के लिए आपके करके हमारे संपूर्ण दुखों को दूर करके हमें पूर्ण आनंद की प्राप्ति कराइए और आपकी कृपा हमारे ऊपर सदा बनी रहे प्रतिहारा अपने आप को रिमाइंड कीजिए आप कौन हो मैं शुद्ध आत्मा मैं चेतन स्वरूप हूं मैं पास तन मात्र आए आकाशवाणी जल पृथ्वी पास तन मात्र पांच प्राइमोरियल एलिमेंट आकाशवाणी जल पृथ्वी दस इंद्रिया चित मन अंकार बुद्धि कुछ नहीं बल्कि मैं शुद्ध आत्मा मैं चेतन स्वरूप the five primordial the five subtle and the ten senses the mind memory ego intelligence but i am the divine i am the soul i am the prana i am the life to my shuddhi atma me chetan so you have to know yourself the big question is who i am be in the am the i focus on the i am be the mirror the darpan to visualize yourself as to even i when i'm speaking i'm sitting but i'm watching it's like a movie you are beyond that i the i of the i am mai shuddhi atma mai chetan swarup all other coverings you have to go beyond it's like you know cleansing the mirror once you clean all the dust of it you can see yourself quite cleanly and if you clean the mirror of your heart then you can keep see the universe as it is in you as they are not through your perception altered perception but as they are then interception detachment dissociation dharna dhyan samadhi dharm lakshan avastha concentration contemplation meditation transcendence blissfulness consciousness truthfulness indirect path with the direct to the highway oh ka pehla swar vyapak swar shakti par swar antaryami janma nand mune me ka nitya pavitra srishti karta dharma ka moksha ki prapti brahmin chhatriya vaist ta shud ब्रह्मचरी गृहस्थी बानस पर सन्यास की यात्रा आप अनंत काल से अपने उपकार अपनी आशीर्वादों की वर्षा करते हो नौद्रिव्य आकाश वायु जल पृथ्वी हर काल चौबीस गुण तैतीस कोटिया प्राणी मात्र के संपूर्ण कारणाओं को आप पूर्ण करते हो हमारे लिए जो कुछ शुभ तथा हित करे उसे बिना मांगे स्वयं हमारी जोली में डालते जाते आपके आंचल में विचल शांति तथा नंद का वास आपके चरण शरण की शीतल छाया में पम तृप्ति शाश्वत सुख की उपलब्धि तसाव अविरचित पदार्थों की हमें सच्ची श्रद्धा तथा विश्वास हो कमल की फूल की तरह 
ये जीवन जीते हुए भौतिक स्वरूप जिंदगी से आत्मिक तथा आध्यात्मिक ज्ञान शक्ति प्राप्त करें जितने क्लेश दुर्गंध दुर्भसन है सब दूर हो क्रिएट आ ऑर्गेनाइज द प्रोटेक्ट आ मेंटेन आ इवेंचुअली द डिस्ट्रॉय आ विंटरिटी द कीप शावरिंग योर ब्लेसिंग और डिजायर्स ऑफ लिविंग साउंड विच फुल फुल बाय व्हाटेवर इज गुड एंड बेनिफिशियल फॉर अस यू प्रोवाइडेड अस विदाउट अस प्रोवाइड अ विजडम हैप्पीनेस पीस एंड कंटेंटमेंट लव एंड अफेक्शन dispel of illness and weakness may we always remember to sit when well, submit ourselves to the arms of the benevolent compassionate god be like the lotus flower living in this material world in the pond of old dirt but still flowers that beautiful flower so detach yourself from this sensual attachments the anger jealousy hatred violence ill will but live beyond at a level of the plane of compassion sympathy and part of wonders oh ka dusra sarv rakshak aadi devi ka aadi bhautik adhyatmik prithvi lok braspati devlok sun sari suksham karan gross physical body ethereal energy or subtle body but into your karmic causal body to the pure consciousness or the cosmic vortex the vibrational activity that goes on जाके राखो साई या मार सके ना कोई बाल लबा का कर सके जो जग बैरी हो यू द शीत यू द प्रोटेक्ट आई एवेंज एट एवरी प्लेन्स ऑफ आई एग्जिस्टेंस इज नो रेंडमनेस ऑफ एक्सीडेंट सेवन विद इन अर्थ सेवन विद इन सेवन विद इन एटमोस्फेयर एवरीथिंग इज अ कोइंसिडेंट द सिंक्रोनिसिटी सिंफनी हार्मनी हीमोस्टेसिस मैग्नेटिज्म मेंटल फिजिकल मटेरियल स्पिरिचुअल may you have all the virtuous qualities of life forgiveness simplicity stability fearlessness humbleness may all good qualities of possession body be healthy and strong mind pure and enlightened soul divine is perfect through your blessings company all our senses be enlightened may our heart have compassion and sympathy words be vivid and thoughtful action may your vision of love for the creation may your complete education of wisdom of personality be virtuous and great to exist amongst the poorest of the poor सात्विक गुणों की प्राप्ति क्षमा सरलता स्थिरता निर्मित अंकार शुद्धता है सब अच्छे गुण हमारे संपत्ति बने हमारा शरीर स्वस्थ तथा परिपुष्ट मन सूक्ष्म तथा उन्नत आत्मा पवित्र सुंदर आपके संस्पर्श में सारी शक्तियां विकसित हृदय में दया तथा सहानुभूति वाणी में मिठास हो दृष्टि में प्यार और बुद्धि तथा ज्ञान से परिपूर्ण करें हमारी व्यक्तित्व महान तथा विशाल और दीना दीनों के मन में चलने वाले ईश्वर ओ का तीसरा शुद्धम से बुद्धम से मुक्तम से निरंजनों से आप शुद्ध ओल प्यूर परफेक्ट एंड कंप्लीट मे वी अक्वायर इंस्पायर फॉर द प्यूर एंड परफेक्शन संकल्प करें साधना पुरुषार्थ अभ्यास तथा विवेक और वैराग की प्राप्ति होती है डिटेचमेंट डिस्क्रिमिनेटरी पावर इंटेलेक्ट तत्व में से अहम ब्रह्म जैसी सचीना न संकल्प मोक्ष शक्ति हितम तामसिक इनोशिया नेगेटिविटीज चंचलता पर राज सिक्सटी सिक्सटी सेवेंटी थाउजेंड थोट सडे सात्विक स्थिति सतो गुण से निष्काम कर्म करें जन्म जन्म के क्लेश वैष्णाइज इंप्रेशन संस्कार जो है द पैकेज दैट वी कैरी द कार्मिक साइकिल टू गेट द स्टेज ऑफ न्यूट्रलिटी और बैलेंस ऑफ द positive and negative the duality of life but into state of nishkam karam nishwarat bhav janmo janam ke klesh vidya aspita raag dvesh abhi vesh mirtyu ka bhay ulta jaan laga badle ki bhavna sansama kaam krodh lob mo mada maya vasuya irsha dvesh tadikutil bhavna ko dur kave baat pit sab slesh ma vibhapti jagat se swapn shishupti तुरिया तुरिया तर भार्गव चेतना की प्राप्ति शब वाणी संकल्प ध्यान ज्ञान अन्न जल अग्नि आकाश स्मृति आशा आत्म परमात्मा की प्राप्ति लोकेश प्रतिष्ठा विदेशता से पूर्ति और 
मैत्री भाव करुणा बुद्धता उपेक्षा की प्राप्ति हो यम अहिंसा सत्य आस्थ्य ब्रह्मचरी अपिग्राव नियम सौ संतोष तपस्या सुद्या ईश्वर परिधान की प्राप्ति तो एकाग्र की प्राप्ति योग चित्र वृत्ति निरोधा सर्विकल से सर्विचार सर्वी से नर्वी संप्रजा से संप्रजा सर्गुण से निर्गुण शान सुष्मा कैबल्य धान न ध्यान समाधि धर्म लक्षण अवस्था कंसंट्रेशन कंटेप्लेशन मेडिटेशन ब्लिसफुलनेस अस्थि की प्राप्ति अनिमा महिमा गरिमा लरिमा महिमा प्राप्ति प्रकम में अस्तवा विस्तवा प्राणदाता दुख हरता सुख के प्रदाता जगत के उत्पादक प्रकाश पान परमात्मा देव हम आपके वर्ण शेष रूप का ध्यान करते हैं अपनी बुद्धि को उत्तम मार्ग में प्रेरित कीजिए ओम सत्यम ओम जानम ओम अनंतम ओम ब्रह्म सत्यम ओम जानम ओम अनंतम ओम ब्रह्म सत्यम ओम जानम ओम अनंतम ओम ब्रह्म ओ आनंद ओम सत्यम ओम जानम ओम अनंतम ओम ब्रह्म ओ आनंद ओ आनंद ओ आनंद पंथ चिकित्सा ओम तक चक्षुर दीहित पुरुषाच व्रत मुचत पशे में शरदशित जीवे में शरदशित शुणिया में शरदशित प्रभाव में शरदशित दीनश्याम शरदशित भूष्य शरदशित जागृत दूर में दैवी दैवी दूरम ज्योतिषाम ज्योतिरीक मना शिव संकल्प वस्तु ओम त्रैंबक जामहिषुगंधिम पुष्पिवर्धन गुरुवाकमिव वंदना मृतर्मुक्षमृता ओम तेजोमसि तेजो मई दिन बल्लमसि बल मई दिन ओजोमसि ओजो मई दे वीरमसि वीर मई दे सहोमसि सहो मई दे तमेंचत पित तमें बंधुशिखा तम विद्याधर्म तमे सर्व देव ओ विश्वादीव सुतर्दता पराशुआ यद्रंतनाश्वरण गर्भा सवर्तताग्रे भूतस्त जाता पतिरिकाशी सदा धारित विद्या मुक्तिमकृष्मी देवाय विश्या देव ओ व्यात्मदावलदाश्य विश्व पास्त पश्यम यशवा यछायावृत यशवृत्ति कृष्मी देवाय विशा देव ओ व्यप्राद निमीश तो मैत्रेय काजक्त भावुआ या इसे से दुई पे चस्पतिष्पदा कृष्मी देवाय विशा भी देव उमेन्द्र देव रुग्रापित चीड़ा ये निस्वास सवित मेन्द्र नाका यो अंतरिक्षे राजशो भी माना कृष्मी देवाय विशा भी देव ओम प्रजापति नृत्य विश्वा जाता परिता भावुआ यद कामास्ते जहु मस्तु वैम श्याम तरो रहीना ओम सन्नु मद्र जनित सविदाता नवनी वेद भूयना विश्वा यत्र यत्रदेवामृतमाशाश क्षत्रिय धाम धैर्यता ओम अग्नि नये सुपथाराय स्मादी देव वयो नानी विद्वान यो तस्म जौरा मेनो भूष्याम ते नमा उदे ओम नमो शंभवाय च नमो भवाय च नमा शंकराय च मस्कराय च नमा शिवाय च शिवतराय च ओम शंडो विता शन वरुणा शंडो भरिवा शंडो दुर्बृहस्पति शंडो विष्णु रूप्रमा नमो ब्रह्मे नमस्तवाय तुक्ष ब्रह्मादी तम प्रदीक्ष ब्रह्मादी स्वामी रिक्तम वदी स्वामी सत्यम वदी स्वामी तन्म हो तो तद्वाक्तराम हो तो अहो तो माम हो तो वाक्तरा ओम शन्न देवी रमिष्टया आपो भो तो पीत ये शन्नो रवि शर्वंत न ओम शर्वशा स्वस्तिर्भवतु मंगल स्वस्तिना इंद्रो बृहदेवाशा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व मेदा स्वस्ति नष्टाशरी वरिष्ठनेमी स्वस्ति न बृहस्पतिर्दा ओम सहना सहना भुन सवीर कर्वा बही तेजस्वी नीतमस्तु मिषा बही 
दीना तकते ना बुजिता ओ व्यथा पिंडे तथा ब्रह्मांडे तथा ब्रह्मांडे तपिंडे हूँ गुरुदीवी वाही कर्मानी निजे विषय ताम समायो तुए तीता नितिति यस्ती ना कर्मली कते नवे ओम अस्तुमा सत्गम्या तमसुमा जूतिरगम्या मृत्युमा गम्रितम गम्या ओम सर्वी भवंति सुखिना सर्वी संतु निरामया सर्वी भद्रानी कश्यतु माँ कश्यते दुख भावे तु ओ पूर्ण बदा पूर्ण बिधम पूर्णाह पूर्ण बदचते पूर्ण सया पूर्ण माधाया पूर्ण विवाह वशिष्यते ओ दिशांति अंतरिक्षम शांति ही पृथ्वी शांति रापा शांति रोष दय शांति परिस्थिति शांति विश्वे देवा शांति ब्रह्मा शांति शर्वेदुल शांत शांति रे वे शांति शामा शांति रे धी ओ शांति ही शांति ही शांति ही ओ Shanti Shanti Dhanivar, thank you all for joining. Hope you have a good Sunday. Enjoy your Father's Day and look after your body, your mind, then you can advance so much more. Then you can contact the abundance and the life that is beyond. Okay. Take care. Thank you.